ليش ما بتتجوزي؟ بلكي بتحلى عني يعني انت موافقه؟ ليش لا؟ He stays here. He gets better here. Well, we can discuss. No. No discussion. I am his next of kin. I am his proxy. I am in charge. Thank you. Hello, you might know her as the enigmatic Marsha Roy in the hit TV series Succession or as the Egyptian-American mother Mesa in the award-winning comedy Rami. Or perhaps for her roles in many acclaimed films such as the Oscar-nominated drama Paradise Now and Rika or The Syrian Bride. Her latest film is a rom-com set in Gaza and it's out in France this week. Welcome to the show, Hiam Abbas. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here now. A romantic comedy set in Gaza. Tell us more about the film. It's a romantic comedy uh, uh, within, uh, of course, the conflict envelope that never left Gaza so far. And it's about a love story between a, a fisherman and a woman who has a shop in the market. She repairs uh, clothes for, for people for women, for the women of Gaza. Well, let's take a look at a clip of the film. So this is the second feature by the Palestinian brothers, um, Tarzan and Arab Nasser. You starred in their debut, Degrade, in 2015. Now, even though their films are set against this backdrop in Gaza, where there's bombings, there's um, young people wanting to get out, there are blackouts, their films do show another side of life there. Why is it important? Because I think it's important for them really to show life. I mean, life, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a word uh, much uh, larger than just the conflict itself. And the other thing that often in the media, we just like hear basically about the conflict in Gaza. We never really kind of like hear what the story behind the conflict, what the story of people, what's the story of individuals. And I think that the, the, the two brothers are full of uh, these stories. Like the citizen of Gaza is not like any other citizen because um, even if they try to be, even if they try to kind of like behave or, or dream in a normal way, they have so many restrictions around them whether they are political or social or traditional, they don't permit people to dream or to live a normal life. And I think for the boys, it's very important for them to kind of like, in French, we would say, rend homage uh, to the life of those who they left. So pay tribute to that life. Well, yeah. France 24's um, Arabic channel spoke to the directors at the Venice Film Festival where um, the movie was presented. Have a listen to what they had to say about you. <laughs> She's wonderful. On a human level, first and foremost, this is the second time that we've worked with her and we could work with her again and again. There is a chemistry between us. She's very professional as an actress. She manages to take on the character. There's something that I always say about her. It's that she embodies my mother to perfection. In the film, she looks like my mother. And when I'm a little nostalgic and I want to remember her, the only thing I have to do is watch clips of her because she really embodies my mother. Now, Hiam, they also said um, how Palestinians are so proud of you and your work and that you represent Palestinian cinema for so many people. Um, what does that mean to you? You know, like hearing them, like it feels like such a... Um, it's really... It gives, it gives me a lot of warmth. It gives me a lot of um, emotion. And, of course, this brings me back to say that Maybe I didn't, I wasn't wrong by choosing this job, you know, and 
if 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 I if I could make my people, you know, happy, really to identify themselves with with my work, with some something that I do, it means that I maybe succeeded part of uh, my goal in life, you know. So we were born to to do whatever we could really to serve, you know, and. Uh, when I say serve, really, it's like the word serve, you know. <laughs> if people receive that from me, I'm really very, very thankful to all the powers that exist, you know, that made me um, choose and continue to choose to do more of this work. And Yem, you've lived um, here in Paris since the 80s. Um, you were born um, close to Nazareth in Israel and you started your career with the Palestinian National Theatre. What made you choose Paris then to settle down? Honestly, I didn't choose Paris. I think Paris chose me somehow, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's really like the... I was in London before when I left Palestine. I went to London to live there and try maybe to spend a year of my life trying to find something, you know, maybe some kind of different air to my person and to the work that I was wanting to do at the time. And I just met a man with whom I lived in Paris. He was French from Paris and this is how I ended up in Paris. <laughs> and then like when you start building family, of course, you need to settle down. And I think that's really what happened. And since then, you've been involved in so many projects um, and it seems to be more and more as time goes on. Um, you're working on the third series of um, Rami. Uh, it centers on the show's title character uh, and his family and how they navigate being Muslim Americans in today's society. You play um, Rami's unfiltered but well-meaning mum, Mesa. Now, is this your first comedic role? Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about real comedy, yes. And what do you like about it? I just discovered uh, that it's a lot of fun and I discovered that through comedy you could say a lot as well. Uh, what's really interesting about Rami as well, it's like, because it's half hours, so it's a concentrated of, like, you know, a journey over a short time where everything becomes very important. Like, everything has to has, has to have a meaning somehow. And the work with Rami, really, it's like Rami kind of, uh, he set up, uh, like, the, 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 the whole atmosphere and the whole joy around his his uh, show that is so so much enjoyable and so much friendly and so much fun to be on so yeah that's really lovely and how important do you think it is to see um a series like this about um, american muslims on tv at the moment when when uh, like a personal story becomes a story of a collectivity a group of people that identify themselves with especially when you feel that you're not considered as a equal person to the citizens you live with in a citizenship i think it's very important it's very important to tell our stories in that sense it's very important to bring out um uh, interrogations about who we are and our identities and you know make them appear to the to the largest uh, crowd in a, in, a, in a very sincere way where they just can maybe think that they have been mistaken about judging us in a, in a certain way. And we recently marked 20 years since 9-11. I know during um, your career you've worked um, with directors to try and improve the roles that you've been given, like in Paradise Now, um, where you played the mother of a suicide bomber. Um, you also work, you worked on Babel. You've worked on lots of things to try and um, change this idea that people have of this mass of Arabs. Yeah, um, the cliché. The cliché. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, there's been a shift in the way stories about Muslims are portrayed on TV in the past 20 years? I think, yes, I really do. I think, I remember um, we came out with The Visitor on 2008, The uh, Visitor by Tom McCarthy, and it's a story of a young Syrian-American. And this boy was stopped by a random way in the subway and just like put in a detention center. And the whole story was about, about how he was dealing with his identity, American identity, because he was, he grew up there, you know, so like he, he doesn't know anything about Syria, about his homeland.
uh, ever since the visitor, I started to notice that there was a change in some people's mentalities, artists as well in the States where they, yes, they wanted really to go forward and show the Arab in a different way, you know, the Muslim in a different way, trying to say, in fact, basically they trying to answer the question, who are these people? And I think by asking the questions, the answers are so many because those people are a lot of people, right? And like any other people, they have the good people and the bad people. And like once you start learning more about the good people, you forget everything we're saying, you know, that is global about those Arab being bad people. That doesn't mean that like all the cliche or the stereotypes that we still have somehow are gone, but it's, it's a long fight. And I think the fight is like getting on a way where I hope it will lead us to an equal terms, let's say, an equal, equal presence in, in life and on the image as well. Okay. Kim Abbas, thank you so much. Thank Gaza Monomore is out in France. Now we're going to play out with the new season of um, Succession. Quickly, why do you think this series about these horrible characters is such um, a success? They are so bad, maybe, uh, that we want to know how far that could go, you know? And I think the writing of the series keeps us on that, you know, s suspended line to try and find... How bad could this go? You know, like, where could it go? And I think this is, this is something that I think attracts people a lot. Yeah, OK. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Where does this end? This friction. I thought my family was fucked up. This is next level. Roman is a knucklehead. Shiv is a fake. And Kenny is screwy. I've seen more than any of them. This life is not for everyone. It's a number on a piece of paper. It's a fight for a knife in the mud. I'm a good guy. I'm better than you. France 24 en español. Pasa 24 horas. De difusión diaria. 24 horas para informarse de, de toda la actualidad de América Latina y, y el mundo. Todos los días desde el terreno a, a través de nuestros noticieros y programas hablamos con los dirigentes del continente y también de los que hacen la actualidad política, económica, artística y cultural para ofrecerles una información completa del mundo que confronta todos los puntos de vista. Nuestras redacciones en América Latina y en Francia trabajan en estrecha colaboración para estar siempre presente en todos los eventos importantes y proponerles una mirada diferente. France 24 en español. Ahora, todo, todo el día. día. Liberté, égalité, actualité.